Hello, Mathies. Gatos here. Welcome to section 9.2, Quadratic Inequalities in One Variable. Before we get into that, though, I want to review quadratic inequalities in two variables. So since this is a review question, I recommend you pause the video, try this on your own, come back and see the solution. So I can see looking at this picture, it is in fact a quadratic, so I'm going to start with the boundary line, the line here for the parabola. So I know that it is a quadratic, so I'll use vertex form of a quadratic. So looking at the vertex 4 and 5, I'm just going to substitute that in place of P and Q and have y equals a x minus 4 squared plus 5. So all I have to do now is solve for a, and to do that, I look to the other point on my graph, negative 3. So the point is 0, negative 3. So I'm going to plug that in and solve for my a value. So here you see I have 0 take away 4, that's negative 4, and negative 4 times negative 4, positive 16. So subtract 5 from both sides, I get negative 8 equals 16a. Just divide both sides by 16, and I get negative 1 half. So altogether, my boundary line has the equation negative 1 half x minus 4 squared plus 5. So let's look at our picture. First thing is I have a solid line, so it's equal to. And as I shade around this boundary line, I see I'm always above. So I'm shading above, and it's a solid line, so let's put that all together. And my inequality is y greater than or equal to negative 1 half x minus 4 squared plus 5. Okay, in this question here, I have a little multiple choice question. So again, pause the video, try the question, come back and see the solution. So in this one here, I want to match the inequality to a general question. So I have y less than ax squared plus bx plus c. Now a is greater than zero, so right away that narrows a couple opportunities for me, or options for me. So a is greater than zero, which means the parabola opens up. So I know that c and b are not an option. So since it opens up, I have it narrowed down to a and d. So let's look at this, it's less than. So you can see the boundary line is not a solid line, and it's less than. So as I shade along, let's look. As I go along my boundary line here, I notice I am always above my boundary line. This one's above. My other possibility is this one here. As I go along my boundary line here, I can see that I'm always below. So which one matches less than? Well, it's below. So I know that D would be my option. Okay, so that was quadratic inequalities in two variables. As I said, we're going to look at quadratic inequalities in one variable. So let's talk about what we've done already. We did two variables. So we had y greater than or equal to x squared plus 4x plus 3. Here that there are two variables there, a y and an x. So we're talking about a line and we're talking about whether we're shading above or below. So two variables two parts to the solution. So it's an area of solution which is all points. It has an x and a y. Well now we're going to talk about inequalities in one variable. So here's the four different types that I'm going to look at. Notice for each one of these types there's only an x. There is no y. So it's a solution of only x values. Now let's look at each of these possibilities. So here ax squared plus bx plus c, that's just the general form of a quadratic. And then I'm comparing them all to zero. So what I've really done is I've set y equal to zero. And that's really just the x-axis. So in each one of these, let's look. Greater than or equal to greater than. Both of those is above. The difference is this equal sign here means it's also on. So above or on. This one here has no equal sign, so it's just above. Now compare that to these ones here, which are less than. So less than, of course, is below. This one has the equal sign, so it's below or on the x-axis. This one here has no equal sign, so it's below but not on the x-axis. So let's look at a couple examples in general before we jump in. So let's look at the positive case here, where I'm looking at above. So I have here y equals x squared plus 3x minus 10. So I have that parabola. I've graphed it. The reason I've graphed it is because I need to know what the x-intercepts are. That's why I graph it. 
So I'm looking at intervals of x since it's here greater than or equal to. I am looking at intervals of x where the function is greater than, which means above, or equal to, which means on. So I'm looking at areas where it is above or on the x-axis. So on the x-axis or above. What if I had x squared plus 3x minus 10 greater than 0? So greater than 0, it's still above. So we have that as still being above. But because it's not got that equal sign to, it's not on the x-axis. So I would erase my point, and I would say that this would be the area that I'm looking for, just above but not on. Let's look at the negative case. So in this case here, we're looking at where the parabola x squared plus 3x minus 10 is less than or equal to. So less than means below. So I'm looking at where it is below. And equal to, it also could be on. So in this case here, I would look at the x-axis or where it is below. So here, x squared plus 3x minus 10 less than 0. That's intervals of x, again, where it is below because it's less than 0. But because it's not equal to, it will not be on the x-axis. So it would be that area, but I would just take away my x-intercepts like that. Hints for writing your inequalities. So if we have our outside arms, those are the two separate areas. We would write it as x bigger than x greater than or equal to, sorry, the x-intercept, or x less than or equal to the smaller x-intercept. Because they are two separate arms, they are two separate inequalities. Or sometimes you could have an inside piece, which is in between. In that case, I would look at the smaller x-intercept less than x, less than the bigger x-intercept. So notice that the x value for the inequality is in between the two values small first, big second. The inequalities also point in the same direction. So to solve inequalities graphically, what we're going to do is we're going to set the inequality equal to zero, graph the boundary line for the purposes of having the x-intercept, and then state intervals where the graph of the function is either above or below, and determine if the x-intercepts are part of the solution. So again, if it doesn't have an equal sign, x-intercepts are not part of the solution. But if it does have an equal sign, the x-intercept is part of the solution. So let's look at this example here. I want to solve where x squared minus 4x is greater than or equal to 5. So the first thing I need to do is isolate, set it to 0. And I'll do that by subtracting 5. So this is the inequality that I'm going to be solving. So I am looking at where x squared minus 4x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 0. So I'm looking for areas where it is above and on the x-axis because it's equal to. So let's look at our graph. And again, for the graph, I'm just really interested in the shape of it and the x-intercepts. So I can see there's my x-intercepts. Well, where is it above and on? above being along here or on including the x-intercepts well that is happening in two separate arms it's happening to the right of 5 including 5 and to the left of negative 1 including negative 1 so my solution for this inequality would be x less than or equal to negative 1 or x greater than or equal to 5 So I want you guys to pause the video, try this one on your own, and come back to see the solution. So the first thing I am going to do is set it to 0 by subtracting 9 from both sides. So I am going to solve the inequality x squared minus 9 less than 0. So less than means below. So I'm looking at areas where it is below. There is no equal sign here, so it is not on the x-axis. So below and not on. So let's look at our graph. So here's our graph. Again, there's my x-intercepts, which is really all I'm interested in, the shape of the graph and my x-intercepts. And I'm looking where it is below, but not on. So it doesn't include my x-intercepts. So I can see that it's below the x-axis in between negative 3 and 3, but not including them. 
So my solution will also be an in-between notation. It will be negative 3 less than x less than positive 3. Okay, let's try this one here. So in this one here, first thing I want to do is set it equal to 0. So I will do that by adding 4x to both sides and also adding 6 to both sides. So in this one here, I'm looking at intervals where the function is less than 0, so that means below the x-axis. But it's not equal to, so it's definitely not on the x-axis. So let's go to our graph. So I'm looking for areas where it's below but not on the x-axis. Well, here's below the x-axis, but I don't see any graph there. So since I don't see any graph there, that would tell me there is no solution. I want you guys to try this same function except it's greater than now. So I want you to pause the video, try this on your own, and come back and see the solution. So for this one here, I'm going to add 4x, add 6, and set it to 0. So I'm looking at x squared plus 4x plus 6 is greater than 0. Greater than means above. So I'm definitely looking where it's above. But there is no equal sign, so it is not on the x-axis. So above, but not on. So let's go back to our graph. So here's my graph, and I'm looking for where is it above but not on. Well, looking at this graph, it is always above. So since it is always above, that tells me every single x value is the solution. So the solution to this would be x is an element of the reals, since it is always above. So that's how we solve quadratic inequalities in one variable graphically. And speaking of graphs, here is the world's most accurate graph. This comprises of pi I have eaten, and this comprises of pi I have not yet eaten. It doesn't get more accurate than that. You guys can move on to the practice questions. Detailed solutions are on D2L, and then move on after that to the textbook questions as needed. So I hope this video helped, and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.